Today, I'll show you how to use NCloth to animate characters cloth and uh, dress. So before we get started, first I want to show you um, the structure of my model. So basically my model has four meshes, the eyeball sphere, the eyelashes, uh, the body, and the dress itself. So basically I have the character's body mesh as a separate piece, and then on top of it, I put dress on. Okay, and let me hide this mesh. And for the dress mesh, let me show you. Uh, here on the bottom, I sealed the hole. So you got an inner face and out face. And uh, you can see that I put a gap between the out face and the inner face. So it doesn't collide with each other. And I sealed the bottom here. And for here, since here it's going to um, touch with the character's back and here touch the character's chest and the character's neck. So I don't have double face for it. Okay, it would be too much. Uh, so what I did is I put a side face and for the neck, the column is the same. And as you can see, I got a, uh, this whole ring. That's the side face and here for the column and another side of the sleeves. I also get a side face. Okay, so that is the model. To get started, I would like you to change a few settings. First, um, go to shading here on your view tile and check on actual joints. So that will enable the joints, no matter if it's inside of a mesh or not. Uh, second, let's go to tall menu, Maya, click on Maya and go to preferences and go to the setting. And for the time, basically 24 frames per second is for film, but if your model is for a game, you can do 30 frames per second. Um, however, let's go to uh, time slider and here playback speed. Um, by default, you should match with your project setting, but here, since we're doing in cloth animation, so we would like to switch to play every frame. So it will help the in cloth to generate better animation because in cloth is real time um, simulation. Okay, save it. And then we'll go to setting box. We'll use Arnold render. And here, image for me. Let's switch to JPEG. Color is 100. And go down below here and preset. Instead of HD 540, we would like to choose a higher resolution, which is HD 1080, and click on close. And then we would like to go to your view panel, go to view, and go to camera setting, and turn on resolution gate. So with this setting, once we do play blast testing of our in cloud animation, we know what is inside the frame, what is not. All right, so now let's get started. First, let's see what we have. For this character, I've animated her, so you can see she has this uh, zombie style walking. Okay, so we'll select this dress, switch from modeling to FX tab, and then you will find ink cloth. So we'll apply, create ink cloth. And then we'll select uh, uh, her body, and go to uncloth and create a passive collider so it will collide with the cloth. Okay, so now let's apply and see what's happened. So now you can see that uh, the clothes start to collide with the body, but uh, it's not that realistic. Okay, so let's go back. So uh, I would like to change a few settings. So I the character's cloth and go to the third button on the right top corner, Attribute Editor, okay? And we'll go to a tab called Nuclear. So click on this uh, triangle button if you can see it. Here is it, Nuclear, and we'll go to Scale Attribute. So here by default is set to one. Basically it means here, um, each cell is one meter if it is type of the one, but if we change it to 0.1, so that means, you know, we have 0.1 meter for each cell. So it will add some realistic to the uh, simulation. You can also do um, 0.01 if you want. 
more details with it. So here I'll just do point one. Okay, with it still selected, um, go to uncloth shape, and go to here the preset. Click on that, and uh, we would like to apply a material to it. So here the material is basically the physics material of it, not um, like what texture is it. So uh, we can do t-shirt. Okay. So we can do t-shirt and if you apply replace, you will give 100% t-shirt material to the object. If you do blend 50%, basically you only have 50% of t-shirt material and 50% of its original material. So here we'll do t-shirt replace. Okay, so now let me do a play blast. So go to top menu, windows, and play blast. Go to option box. So here we would like to render uh, here the time slider. If you choose a start and end, and then it will choose, it will go from frame one to 200 frames. That's the project. Okay, uh, check these two on the view and show elements. And the format, choose AV Foundation, which is will be a video and encoding to H.264, so it will be a MP4 video. And choose from render setting as a display size. We have changed the uh, render setting as HD 1080. Scale, choose one, so it will render 100% uh, resolution of the render setting. Here, frame padding as four. And we'll check on save to file because we're going to save this file. Okay, click on browse, it will be saved to your movies folder. And we can put it name. So test render one to save. And click on play blast. So now you can see that you start to play blast your animation. So this is how it looks with Uncloud's default setting. Looks good but needs a lot of works. So next step, select the cloth, go to attribute editor again, and this time uncloth shape, and we'll go to collision. So here, by default, thickness for my model is set as a 0.3, but if I increase this number, I would uh, increase you know the thickness and uh, it can make uh, the clinician a little bit more realistic. So I will put uh, about like a 0.8. And we can also change the uh, stickiness. So that can make our cloth stick to the canvas body a little bit better. Uh, so instead of zero, we can do maybe two. And let's do another uh, play blast. Okay. So now you can see that the dress is heavier and uh, thicker, uh, but I kind of feel that it's a little bit too sticky to the body. So I'll go back to Maya and select the canvas mesh and go to attribute editor again and change this uh, stickiness. Uh, maybe drop it down to 0.5. Okay, and uh, another thing is, if you really like uh, the view you render your animation, for example, I really kind of like, uh, I really like uh, the play blast render from this point of view. So if I want the play blast to render the animation from this view every time we do a test render, so what you can do is you go to uh, the view and go to bookmarks. Uh, so you can do edit bookmark and create a new bookmark. So here I already had one. So if I create, so it will be the second bookmark and close. So see, if I get to a different position and I can just go to view and go to bookmark and click on that, so it will jump back to the position that uh, I created. Okay, so you can go to the window and play the bust and then you're going to render from this point of view. All right, so I just changed the stickiness down to 0.5. So let me do another play blast and see how it looks. Okay, so now it looks a softener and a little bit more realistic, but uh, the whole thing is too jumpy, uh, especially in some error. I don't want it uh, kind of uh, jumpy, like on the shoulder, on the wrist. Okay, so we can go back 
and we can um, select the vertices here okay and go to edge select remove so I like to select this whole edge loop from the shoulder also includes the side face here the side face on another side okay All right, so select these four edges, okay, include the side face, and then we'll hold down Command and use your mouse right button, and then we'll go to vertices. So basically this will switch your selection from edges to vertices. Okay, so now with these vertices selected, uh, hold down Shift and select your body's mesh. And what we'll do is go to Unconstrain and we'll apply point to surface. So this will attach these points to the surface of the character's body and it will avoid this area to kind of jump. Alright, so do the same thing for another side. With the edge selected, go to vertices, to vertices. Hold on shift, select the character's body and then go to end constraint and apply point to surface. So now the two shoulders has the constraint and it attached to the body's mesh, okay? And I kind of feel that the waist will also need a constraint. So we'll repeat that process. So I've selected the edges on the waist and I can just move it to the side and see if I select actual edges. Okay, that's good. Okay, so the shoulder and the wrist has constraint from the body and let's do a play blast and see the difference so go to top menu view and go to bookmax the camera's view I saved earlier and use a play blast so now you can see that the cloth on the top of the shoulder and on the waist they stay in a place they stick to the character's body and uh, the rest of the part is still bouncing around Okay, so I'll select back our character's dress. Uh, go back to the attribute editor. So this time, uh, we'll go to the dynamic properties. And here we have a value, stretch resistance. So if you, you increase this value, basically you'll have a nice stretch happening on your dress. Okay, so by default, we have a 35. So let's try 50. And let's do another simulation. Okay, so let's select the cloth and go back to attribute editor and we'll uh, play more settings here. So every time I change the setting, I do a play blast simulation uh, in order to see the difference. You don't want to go a lot changes and then go a simulation. And then you don't know uh, what effects have been applied and uh, what Snyder controls what effect. All right, so here we would like to switch to nuclear and you'll find a option called a solver attributes. So here's the sub steps, by default it's a three. So what that means is, um, if you put number three, so every frame, Maya going to look for three different options for uh, where the vertices gonna go and how the simulation would look like. So if you put a higher value, uh, for example, if I put um, 20 as sub steps, uh, max clinician interactions, I also change it from 4 to 20 and now let me do a simulation so this time when I do play plus it's gonna be much slower because now I tell Maya to look for more options for each keyframes alright so now we can see that the physics of uh, this end cloth is really stick it's soft and it's sticky to the character's body but not too sticky However, the wrinkle is not that realistic. So let's go back to the model and see what's going on. So if I select my character's uh, uh, the dress mesh, you can see this is how it looks, the geometry of the wrinkle. The problem is we don't have much uh, um, subdivisions. So here you want to, uh, the end cloth want to generate a wrinkle at here, but we don't have much subdivisions for in cloth to do that. Okay, so 
with the merge selected, uh, we can go to our menu and switch back to modeling and go to mesh and we can smooth it. Okay, so we can go to the setting. So put the division level as one. Okay, so apply smooth. So now you can see that uh, we get a much smoother model and we jump back to frame one, start the dress mesh and go back to attribute editor and this time we would like to go to uncloth shapes so if you go down here you'll find a quantity setting okay so if you increase the max uh, self client interactions uh, basically uh, you improve the simulation to the next level so by default is a 4 we can do 10 as we increase the number basically it'll slow down the render of your animation and also the simulation just let you know. Okay, be really careful about that. And we smooth the model. We increase the the, um, the simulation's quality. And we can go to view and bookmark, and go back to this view and do a final simulation and see how it looks. So now I can feel this is a real cloth. And the only issue I think that makes it less realistic is I cannot feel it's a little bit too heavy which is too thick. So I can go back to Maya here and select the cloth and go to attribute editor and go to his clinician. Remember we have changed the thickness to 0.8. Uh, so maybe this is a too high. So if I do 0.4 and apply and go back to frame one and do another simulation, you'll see it looks, it should be it looks much better. Okay, I kind of like uh, the final result. And once you are satisfied with the render, uh, with the end cloth, and you can do a real render, if this is for your animation. Or if this is only for modeling, you can pause at the pose that you would like and uh, select the dress and delete its history. And then the model will keep its shape. For example, here, I've saved each um, key step of my model and I just deleted history and that saved uh, this model as you can see that if I hit play button it's just a steel frame okay so this is the whole workflow of how to use in cloth to animate your character's cloth and address